on working class foodies. If you're watching the Super Bowl, chances are you're washing the game down with a plate of classic American buffalo wings. The skin over fried and way too crispy, the meat juicy with grease and fat. Is anyone else losing their appetite? Greasy, slimy wings may not actually be very appealing, but wings are still a great Super Bowl party snack. I searched around a little bit and found a method by Alton Brown that didn't need any frying, wasn't greasy, but came out with crispy, tender, succulent wings. Unfortunately, my favorite chicken farmer wasn't at the market, so I went across the street to Whole Foods, where I got a couple pounds of wings from organic, free-roaming chickens for only $2.50 a pound. To make the chicken wings, cut off the wing tip, but save these and freeze them. They'll make a great chicken stock later. Break the joint in the center in half. Then cut the wings in half of the joint and put them in a steamer basket. Meanwhile, bring an inch of water to boil and put the wings in the steamer basket and cover. Steam the wings for 10 minutes. When they're all done, remove them to a cooling rack on a baking tray. Let the wings cool and then pat them dry. Once the wings are cool and dry, move them to the refrigerator for about an hour. My chicken wings spent an hour in the fridge cooling off and firming up. At this point, start making your wing sauce. Making a classic buffalo sauce is incredibly easy. For every 12 wings, melt together half a stick of butter, about a quarter cup of Tabasco sauce, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a pinch of salt. Adjust the amount of Tabasco sauce for mild, medium, or hot. Later, when the wings are done cooking, you can toss them in this sauce. But I wanted to do something a little different. When I was a kid, my mom used to make this fantastic Indonesian-styled peanut dipping sauce. We couldn't find her original recipe, but I tried to replicate it as best I could. I got a big bag of salted peanuts and made my own peanut butter. This is really, really easy. Put your peanuts in a food processor. Add in honey and a little bit of neutral oil. I used grapeseed. Process together until you've reached your desired consistency, texture, and flavor. Look, it's peanut butter. That is some really good peanut butter. By the way, if you're vegan or you're cooking for vegans, don't use honey in the peanut butter. Use agave or another vegan-friendly sweetener. Store this in the fridge and you'll have the best peanut butter and jelly sandwiches you've ever had. First, mince up about two cloves of garlic and about a quarter cup of scallions. In a large bowl, combine a teaspoon of minced garlic, a quarter cup of soy sauce, a quarter cup of rice wine vinegar, and about half a teaspoon of honey. Four tablespoons of your homemade peanut butter, two teaspoons of hot chili sesame oil, a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a few shakes of hot pepper flakes, and a teaspoon of sesame oil. Mix this all together with a whisk. Taste, adjust the seasoning, set it aside. Now, of course, everyone deserves a good Super Bowl snack, so I thought up a couple of simple but tasty vegan-friendly recipes to serve at my Super Bowl party this year. Tempeh is a vegan protein made from fermented soybeans. It's thick and it holds its structure. I cut it into fingers, like mozzarella sticks. I heated a few tablespoons of a neutral oil, like grapeseed oil, in a pan, and then I lightly fried my tempeh on both sides. It's an incredibly simple way to make tempeh. I serve mine alongside our Indonesian-style peanut sauce, but you could also serve your tempeh sticks with honey mustard, marinara sauce. Just make sure if you're actually serving this to vegans, you either don't use products with honey in them or you let the vegans know first, because honey is not vegan. For my next vegan snack, I took seitan, which is pressed wheat gluten, and I made sort of little fake barbecue chicken nuggets out of them. I dredged my seitan in a fried chicken style coating of flour, salt, garlic powder, pepper, and a little crushed red pepper flakes. Then I pan fried the seitan the same way that I did the tempeh, in a little bit of neutral oil until they were lightly browned on both sides. And then I tossed them in my Indonesian style peanut butter sauce. Again, if you're making this for vegans, don't use honey in the peanut butter. Use agave or another vegan-friendly sweetener. I preheated the oven to 400. I brought my wings out of the fridge and sprinkled them with a little salt, pepper, and chopped garlic. Then I roasted the wings for 20 minutes per side until they were crispy and golden brown. If you made the classic buffalo wing sauce, toss the wings in the sauce and then serve them alongside a little blue cheese dressing. If you're using our Indonesian style peanut sauce, toss them in a little bit of the sauce and serve them with more for dipping for people who like their wings extra saucy. Cut a little bit of scallions on top and there you go, you're done. Spent $7.70 on the wings, peanuts, and scallions, $2 for a box of tempeh, and $3.50 for a box of seitan. All in all, the total came to $13.20 for enough snacks to feed four people, which comes down to $3.30 a person. I had soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, honey, and sesame oil on hand, 
but with the exception of the honey, they're about two bucks each, and they're great pantry items. You can use them for a number of recipes, so they're well worth the small investment. So now it's your turn. Let us know what your favorite Super Bowl snack is, or even just your favorite way to make chicken wings. Also, be sure to let us know who you're rooting for in this year's Super Bowl game. Obviously, my team didn't make the cut, but there's always next year. I'm looking at you, Troy. We'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies.